you know, so many times people have asked me throughout the years, like, what's the one thing I need to do on social media? And, and, and I tell them, like, I can't, I can't give you just one thing. There's not yeah. one, <laughs> there's not like one, like little silver bullet that I can tell. I would say one of the most critical aspects of being a marketer online today, quite frankly, is how you and I have developed our relationship. It's cool to uh, to finally link up with you. I know we tried to do this yeah. a couple of times. It didn't work out. I was in the uh, process of moving. But uh, to those that are uh, watching from Rakim's community, it's so nice to meet you virtually. My name is Carlos Gill. I'm a marketer, an author, a speaker. been in the social media game for well over a decade now. I had the pleasure of running social media for uh, no notable brands, specifically Winn-Dixie, Save-A-Lot, LinkedIn, that you've probably heard of before and uh and bmc software and for the last three years i've been working independently on my own uh which has been a, a fun roller coaster ride with a lot of ups and downs uh, i've been doing the whole entrepreneurial hustle and i uh, came out with my book then the marketing which we're going to talk about here today this yep. book came out last year um and that in itself has been has just been amazing because you know having a book you know as you know rakim it's, it's definitely a legacy piece, which is different than just publishing a piece of content on YouTube or writing a blog. Like every single time when someone reaches out to me, man, the DMs and, you know, or tweets or puts on Instagram, like, man, like I read your book or I'm currently reading your book. It's just, it's, it's an indescribable feeling that you have to be an author to really know how that feeling is because it's an impact that you make on, on people's lives and their career. You know, so many times people have asked me throughout the years, like, what's the one thing I need to do on social media? And, and, and I tell them, like, I can't, I can't give you just one thing. There's not yeah. one, <laughs> there's not like one, like little silver bullet that I can tell you, because first of all, I'd be doing it and everyone else would be doing it. Right. And marketing, as you know, doesn't work that way. I would say one of the most critical aspects of being a marketer online today, quite frankly, is how you and I have developed our relationship. It's first of all, being consistent. So posting content consistently that other people see, and then you form relationships little by little as people take notice, right? They see your content, you see their content, you know, you support them, they support you. That's how this game works. But that's just one aspect of it. So, you know, for me, again, going back to like my motivation for why I wrote the end of marketing, the motivation was simple. I think you have a lot of, of gurus and thought leaders that are preaching tactics that probably worked about 10 years ago mm -hmm. but the world continues to evolve the world continues to change and, and look let's just let's just kind of address the elephant in the room right you know i'm hispanic right i'm tapped into different culture that a lot of these speakers aren't really incorporating into their methodologies and their teaching Absolutely. right so because I've sat in corporate marketing departments and I see how the game works on the inside and how the game on the inside doesn't correlate in parallel with the game in the outside world, I said, F it. I'm going to write a book that's probably going to get under some people's skin, but <laughs> it's going to speak the truth. It's going to talk about things that naturally for a NYU or Harvard graduate marketer it's going to be a little unorthodox, right? I teach about growth hacking in the book. I teach about what I refer to as being a marketing savage or going after your, your, your competition's followers, right? Your competition's falling asleep at the wheel. I talk about how to incorporate a personality. I have an entire chapter in the book dedicated to DJ Khaled and kind of breaking down his strategy on social media. So again, like I am not an orthodox marketer. I didn't get into the game, um, you know, right out of school, I got into this game out of necessity because I lost my job in 2008 in the banking industry. And I started up a business and discovered that, wow, social media gives me un an untapped opportunity to engage with people for free, provided right. that I just show up and I'm consistently in people's faces. So again, you know, the, the, the title of the book, End of Marketing, is by design intended to catch, catch your eye and get your attention. But once you're actually in the book, it's intended to teach you a whole heck of a lot about social media marketing. And I'd say as a author now, you know, combined with being a marketer, the objective is just to get the book in front of as many people as possible, make as much noise. You know, I refer to the, to the internet and social media today throughout the book as a noisy digital ocean. I think to sum it up, um, you know, is a, is a marketing Bible, if you will, to teach anyone that reads it 
how to humanize your brand by doing exactly what we're doing right here. To be a marketer today and kind of sift through a lot of the noise and the, the bullshit, quite frankly, that a lot of gurus and thought leaders are feeding their communities, you have to have an, an edge appeal, so to speak. You know, I call it a sex appeal. I call it a curb appeal. You have to have an edge. And uh, a lot of it, and, I, and this is true of anything, um, where you kind of, you do the work, is um, people don't know what they don't know. I focus on financial literacy, financial education, whatever we want to call it, but I more focus on financial empowerment. I believe that we all have the um, potential to go out there and make the life that we want for ourselves. But it's more than, um, it's more than just knowing, you know, one plus one equals two. It's believing that, first of all, you deserve it. And second of all, what are you going to do to go out and get it? Um, what's that accountability look like? And so empowerment for me, um, when I talk about financial empowerment, I'm talking about what's your mindset look like? What's mm. your what money look like from a mental and spiritual perspective before you even get to um, those large you know, dollar amounts? The real world, the online world are not one and the same. There are two parallel universes, right? In the online world, we are more famous, we are more successful, we have more friends than really in the real world. And the older I have become, I have really evaluated what social media really means to me. So can you talk about your experience as a speaker um, participating in, in these conferences, whether they're virtual, in-person, corporate, um, maybe more relaxed? First and foremost, I love public speaking because I like to teach. And yeah, you know, I have people that reach out to me almost on a daily basis and ask me, Carlos, how do you get into the speaking business? And the first thing I ask them is why do you want to become a public speaker? Because public speaking isn't about making money. It's not about becoming famous. It's about serving. Right. If you really have a passion for serving and teaching others, then public speaking can be a great career and gateway for you for other things, for other, other avenues as well. And, and you see, I think what happens is you have a lot of folks that they look at the big name speaker and they, they probably say, oh man, I want to make you know, millions of dollars just like this person does. And again, it goes back to people are prioritizing money above anything else. And don't get me wrong. Like I have bills to pay. I have a family to support also, but money comes along with the territory as well. You should never get started in doing something because your motivation is money. If you're successful, if you're talented, if you have a passion for what you're doing, trust me, the money will follow. So that's like the first thing I like to establish with anyone who wants to get into public speaking is what's your purpose? Um, second is what can you teach? What are you good at teaching? Not everyone's a teacher. I thought years ago that I could write books and be this keynote speaker. And the reality, like I said to you, is time needed to take its course for me to actually have something to speak about. Um, once you break into public speaking, you realize that there's a lot of competition and the field is really big. So you have to then start kind of tapping into, well, what are your uniquenesses? So after doing what I do for 10 years, and I've been in public speaking since 2014 up until now, I can't even tell you how many speeches I've done because I stopped counting a few years ago. It's been <laughs> a lot. So there's one thing I can tell you that's unique about almost every single conference I've spoken at. Can you guess what it is? Um, you are the only person of color. Bingo. Bingo. And that's something that I use as a superpower. You see, a lot of folks feel that you have to, you have to work to fit into someone else's box if you want to succeed. And I realized years ago that it's not about fitting in someone else's box. It's about creating a bigger box. I truly believe that conference organizers are going to make a more concerted effort to incorporate more diversity on their stages. They're going to have no choice. So I'll give you three kind of key, key tips to break down a keynote. This is going to help you and this is going to help anyone that's watching this. This is how you build an amazing speech in just three, three ways. One, your first part of your talk is giving people background of who you are. Why are you on that stage today? Like, really, who are you? Next, step two, 
what you're going to speak to them about and why it's important. And then three is you have to make it, the, the material that you're presenting, you have to make it really easy for the end user to say to themselves, ah, I like this guy or girl because they're relatable, first and foremost. I'm going to stay in touch with them and follow them. Two, what they said really makes sense. It's important. And they told me why it's important. It's not just theory. Three, they actually showed me something new that I didn't know that I can now go apply, whether it's in my business or my finances. So again, that's, that's, that's been my kind of strategy, if you will, for putting together a talk. Awesome. I appreciate that. I'm sure everybody else. I know I spoke a lot, man. I'm sorry. No, no, no. You're the guest and then, you know, you're dropping gym after gym after gym. So I'm, I'm appreciative of the conversation. Tell everybody where they can find you. Go to end of marketing book.com. All right, brother. Thank you. All right. Thank you.